time. I see people from Australia, from Austria, from Indonesia, from Israel, from Bulgaria, from Russia, from Switzerland, from the US, and many more. So today we are very happy to invite Stephanie Barnes to join us and to lead us with idea of adding this session today named Radical KM was not part of our initial syllabus. However, when we got to know her ideas, we were so uh, positive, we were so, um, we, we understood deeply that if we're speaking about advanced KM, this is another perspective that should be taught, should be shared with people so they can fly and take KM to even higher and better results. So I won't continue. And Stephanie, the stage is yours. As you see, people are joining in. Please start. Great. Thank you. Let me start share my screen here to get started. So thank you. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here talking to, to all of you. So um, just a little bit about who I am for those of, I know there are a couple of people on that know who I am already, but um, for the majority of you that don't have any idea who I am, <laughs> um, I am an accountant and IT management person by education. So I have an undergrad in accounting and an MBA in IT. Um, I've been doing knowledge management since 1999. Um, and been self-employed as an independent consultant um, since 2008 and 2003. So I got started in knowledge management at Hewlett Packard, where I was at HP for seven years, four of them doing knowledge management. And I am Canadian, but based in Berlin. Hence the last lack of um, German accent. Um, so... And to get started with, we are going to do a little guided meditation to get us focused on what we're doing here for the next hour. So I think everybody was in their home office. I didn't notice anyone driving or doing anything like that. So, um, but get comfortable, take a slow, deep breath and close your eyes. Let go of any tension you feel as you sink into the surface you're resting on, becoming still more comfortable and relaxed. Take another slow, deep breath and release your thoughts, letting them drift far away. And now take a third slow, deep breath and know that in this moment, all is well and you are taken care of. Imagine stepping through a doorway into the light, into a beautiful, calm meadow filled with wildflowers. It smells beautiful and fresh. The breeze is gentle and warm on your face. As you try to step further into the meadow to enjoy the peace of the surroundings, you notice a series of strings holding you back, stopping you from taking more than a step or two. They don't hurt, they just gently stop you from moving forward. As you look at them, you realize they aren't that thick, they're quite thin, and they wouldn't be difficult to break free of. As you consider your situation, you notice a pair of scissors in your hand. You cut each string one at a time. As you cut the string, the end that's attached to you dries up and turns to dust, blowing away in the breeze. As you cut each one, you feel a sense of release and freedom. Once the last one is cut, you feel joy at being released. You can now easily move into the meadow and bask in the sun and the peacefulness of your surroundings. Glad to be free of those strings that were holding you back. You breathe deeply and slowly, taking in the scent of the flowers and the warmth and gentleness of the breeze.
it will soon be time to bring this journey to a close. But first take a moment to thank yourself for giving yourself this gift. Bring your awareness gently back to your physical surroundings, back to our virtual room. Take your time and when you're ready, open your eyes and feel awake, alert and refreshed. Okay, thank you. Um, normally I would take a pause here and reflect for a moment and ask people to um, contribute what their, their thoughts are. Um, we're a larger group today than I usually do this with. So I'm gonna ask you to just write in the chat um, if you have anything that you would like to share about your experience of that um, guided meditation. And I'll take a quick look and see what's there um, once I notice something. Um, but yeah, that's a, I do this at the beginning of my, my workshops and my classes and sometimes in my meetings. Um, it just helps us get centered and sort of leave everything behind and um, yeah, get really productive. Um, everything is so chaotic and we're jumping from meetings, you know, one after another, after another, back to back Zoom or Teams or Google Meet. And so I find that taking a couple of minutes really like that and um, really helps us get focused. So um, let me just take a look at what people are writing. So relaxed, feeling of being unlimited. Oh, lovely, thank you. Heavenly, worked well, thank you. Great, excellent. It's interesting, sometimes um, people haven't meditated or done anything like that before. So it's really um, been a little bit on one hand unnerving for them to do that, but also really positive. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for sharing your comments and moving on. So as we all know, the world has changed. It has definitely changed since 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago when I started in knowledge management at Hewlett Packard. In those days, it was about people process and technology and it still is about people process and technology. Um, but in those days it was more about creating repositories and um, yellow pages of user profiles and yeah, making things, expecting that there was a sort of a stock and flow that things were relatively stable and um, that's not really the case anymore. Um, the world has become increasingly volatile and certain complex and ambiguous or, or VUCA for those of you familiar with that um, acronym. It's become more so in the last two and a half, two plus years um, with the pandemic, um, which has been both good and bad, I think, um, at least from my perspective, there's been good and bad things come out of this, uh, more good than bad. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's definitely, you now for a while there, it's less so now, but get up every day and check you know, what mask I had to wear and what stores were open and, and things and things are sort of settling down, but we're trying to find a new, a new normal and what hybrid working means and yeah, how we're gonna go forward. So the world has changed and, and is changing and things aren't so, there's not the same stocks and flows that we're, we're used to. Employees have changed. We've had the great resignation in, in the US and, and to, in lesser to lesser degrees in other countries. I know folks here in Germany who have also been changing jobs um, and employees have changed. They wanna be more engaged. They wanna be purpose driven. They wanna take more risks and understand the big picture and, and really be seen to be making a contribution and understand what their contribution is. They wanna be coached and not managed and all of these, these things. So that is definitely, um, changed in the, the last 20 years, it's changed in the last, um, well, I wasn't going to say how long I have been in the workforce, but if we go back to um, high school jobs, it's um, quite a while. <laughs> so we won't, we won't go that far because I did that math this morning. I went, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> but it's been a long time. So now in, in 2020 and beyond, it's about people, process and technology, certainly. And um, that part hasn't gone away, but we're dealing with a different environment. We're dealing with VUCA now. So the question is, how do we deal with VUCA? Who can we learn from um, that might help us? You know, as knowledge management professionals, I think, I hope we're, we're looking for that all the time of who does it. It doesn't matter, 
you know, what industry or what sector there they come from, who might have an answer for us. Um, and the answer I came up with when I asked that question was artists. Um, and this is based on some work done by a couple of folks here that I know in Germany, Dirk Dobe and Thomas Copeland um, wrote a book called Creative Company, um, which I fell in love with um, before it was tr even translated into English. <laughs> it's not that I read the German, but they told me what the German said. Um, and they talked to a bunch of artists and creatives, so theater people, musicians, all kinds of uh, people involved in the arts and develop this model that you see on the right side of the, the slide. I'm gonna focus on the artistic attitude and artistic practice um, piece of, of the equation. And, and that's what, you know, those are the behaviors that really help us deal with VUCA. You see the challenges just above the part that I've circled um, and that's VUCA. So um, taking an artistic attitude is about curiosity and passion having the confidence to try, the resilience to get up when you fail um, and not let that stop you. The artistic practice piece is about perceiving and reflecting. So doing that initial sort of scan and reflecting on what you've gathered, playing, so iterating, trying and failing and performing that for an audience, whether that audience is your boss or your stakeholders in the organization. And then of course, learning from that and going back to the perception. And so looping around and that eventually or leads us towards a, a creativity culture of being elastic, being free, having a purpose and the variety and the flexibility to um, you know, deal with whatever the situation is in, in any given case. So this is a, their, so I use their model um, in, in when I talk about radical KM and the artistic practice and our artistic attitude are, are key. And mostly what I'm talking about with Radical KM is about that space to be creative and analytical. We focus so much on the analytical um, and being efficient and effective and the accountant in me and the, the MBA in me, you know, gets that very comfortable with that. But what we've taken out is the space to be creative, to ask questions and to iterate and to try and fail. Um, and so Radical KM is, is really about introducing that space into the organization, into our organizations to to allow that and to give us the flexibility to, to deal with our VUCA world. So creativity is what differentiates us from AI. The technology is great at doing that analytical, logical, process-based piece. So let it do that and let us focus on what we're good at as human beings, which is creativity. Um, and that's you know even more true as AI becomes more embedded in our organizations and our activities and you know, frees us up, I hope, um, to be more creative and innovative and do things in a different way. So as I said, Radical KM is really about making that space to reflect, to iterate, to experiment, to see what happens, to see, discover the best way of doing things, to make new connections. Um, using creativity, using different, I talk a lot about arts-based interventions because I, I have the experience of really having really good experience with those and helping people to look at things differently and, and challenge assumptions, challenge the status quo, and to really come up with some creative different ways of, of solving problems. And there's lots of case studies and, and research, certainly that backs up my anecdotal experience. What I also find what found when I started getting into this was that creativity activates sustain the sustainability mindset behaviors, which wasn't something that I was expecting to find, to be quite honest. But someone asked me to speak about um, the creativity and sustainable mindset um, to their MBA class. And I said yes, because I always say yes when people ask me to speak. <laughs> and, and so I dug into it and, uh, and I looked at the sustainable mindset behaviors and I'm like, you know what? These look a lot like the things that we learn when we adopt a creative, artistic um, mindset and artistic practice. These are the things that the artists sort of naturally do as part of their, their practice. 
this big picture thinking, being a systems thinker, having a sense of purpose in, in their art and what they're doing, why they're doing it. They have a long-term orientation. They're very present in their work. You know, all of these things, I'm like, hold on here. What's, why, when I wrote the paper, when I wrote the first paper, my first radical KM paper almost two years ago, I couldn't find anybody else that had made this connection. And yet to me, it was completely obvious. And, and it was something that we had educated out of ourselves, the, the, our creativity. And yet, and here we are in 2020, 2022 now, trying to be more sustainable, both in our organizations and you know, products and things that we're doing, but also in our lives um, and being what, taking care of ourselves. And we had educated out of ourselves the skills and the abilities that would have made that purposeful or that possible. Um, so yeah, since, the, since I wrote the paper, I've come across a, a book and another paper of people that um, had made the same connection. So, and they were all published within like six months of each other. So, so there were several of us out in the world coming to the same conclusion. So um, I, when I found them, I was glad to find that a find other people thinking that way, but glad that I wasn't um, totally crazy <laughs> for making this connection. So radical knowledge management is about still people, process, and technology that has not gone away. It's just not sufficient um, for the world as it exists now. And we need to put creativity in. And creativity isn't additive, it's multiplicative. And so that's why it's a multiplier there. It's not not just being added in, but it's it's on each of those people, process, and technology, and there's a an application for it in in uh, lots of different ways. So, and that gives us radical knowledge management. The process person in me um, put this together just recently, actually, because um, I kept getting feedback from from people about um, how does this fit in to um, knowledge management and where should they use it? And so um, I thought this might be the easiest way to get the, the message across of how creativity fits in and, and arts-based interventions might fit into a knowledge management process. So the first question you've got to ask yourself is, are people involved in the CAM process? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. It depends on what the process is. If the answer is no, okay, go to the end. There's no opportunity. If people are involved, excellent. The next question I have for you is, are relationships important to the process? Trust and respect, are these important things in the process? No, well, go to the end. No creativity for you. If yes, then great. Are the participants creating new knowledge? Excellent we can add a creative activity. And depending on time and the specifics of the situation, it might be something small, like a 10 minute scribble drawing. It might be a half day intervention in a studio or online. Um, a lot of this stuff can be done online, but a bigger intervention. So you need to decide, you know, the, in the context of what you're, you're doing, um, what the right intervention is, but you have possibility for intervention. If they're not creating new knowledge, are they learning or sharing knowledge? Yes, great, excellent. There's another opportunity for creative activity. No, well, then jump to the end and, and you're done. And so you can iterate on this and go around as many times as you need to, to go around. Um, and it, you know, it, what changes is the context of the, the process that you're looking at and the, the people. Um, but if, yeah, basically if trust and respect and sharing, learning, creating is part of the equation, then there's a possibility to implement or um, bring in some creative activities. I mentioned this a minute ago um, about why we need to relearn creativity, but to say a couple more words about it is that um, with the advent of production lines in the eight, late 1800s, in the, the late um, industrial revolution, schools began to focus on educating people to go and work in factories. That was the purpose of education. Um, and that's when a lot of the education systems that we're still dealing with, you know, uh, were down their start. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, 
the world has changed and we're not all going to work in factories attaching one bolt to another nut um, or some piece of metal to another piece of metal. We're working with knowledge and we're working with papers and, and we need to think about things. And that requires different skill set than production line thinking. And so we need to get out of that mindset and relearn our creativity where it wasn't applicable in, you know, in Henry Ford's Model T production line world. It definitely is a necess necessity in our knowledge creation knowledge economy um, that we're currently living in, you know, 150 years on. Creativity allows us to experiment and come out of our comfort zones. Scary for some, but ultimately a good thing. Um, it gives us a voice and it helps us redirect our energy. So there's a lot of personal benefits in tapping into our creativity, which then follow on into um, our organizations. Because if you've got improved focus, and improved problem solving, this is a good thing for coming up with new solutions, new ways of looking at things, um, adapting to our VUCA world. So the other aspect of, of it is, is to bring our whole authentic self to into our work, which I have heard about for the last, I don't know, five or 10 years about bringing our authentic whole self to work. So putting creativity in the equation helps us do that um, and helps give us the confidence to, to ask the questions and to try out, out what happens and see what happens. It also gives us the opportunity to, to develop leadership skills in, for ourselves and for others. Now, lots of us work for organizations who might be a little risk adverse, who might look at this and go, I don't think so. Um, we're lawyers or we're accountants. We're serious business people. We have no time for this creativity stuff. We have no time for fun in our workplaces. We're serious and we need to be serious and you know, give us a spreadsheet. <laughs> um, there's no time for, for fun and games. And yet fun and games is where innovation comes out of and where resiliency comes out of. So if your organization is risk adverse, start small. Don't make this harder than it has to be. I'm gonna talk about some different strategies for implementing Radical KM in a minute, um, but start small. Start with, with a guided meditation, start with a scribble drawing, um, you know, start with a little icebreaker, um, that just gets people out of their comfort zones, gives them a bit of fun. I do improv games. I have some improv games that I do um, in meetings and workshops. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I was used to doing in person, um, I can do online. Um, we paint. Um, when I do my Radical KM class, um, we paint. Um, so you know, there's there's lots of stuff that um, that. Yeah, that we can find a way to, to do it online. So um, being remote and being hybrid doesn't need to stop us um, at all. So start small, start under the radar, um, you know, do little small guerrilla acts of, of KM, of creativity, and just see what, what happens, um, which is coincidentally how I started out with this um, when in 2011, 2012. Um, my first, one of my first things was I did scribble drawings in uh, workshops in my requirements analysis workshop. And I was a little nervous the first time, I will say that standing in front of a room of, of people um, asking them to scribble on a piece of paper. Um, but I had a, an inkling that this was going to change how the requirements analysis went. And it did. People were more engaged. I got better answers to the questions. The energy shifted in the room. Um, it was a, a totally positive um, experience. And I very quickly started doing them at the end of the workshops as well, um, because it really lifted the energy back up. So we're exhausted after two hours of talking about processes and you know what would make their lives easier with respect to knowledge management and technology. And 
and so did the same scribble drawings at, at the end and it just re-energized everyone um, to go back to their desks and face the mountain of emails that had um, accumulated in, in the two hours or two and a half hours that we were in the workshop. And, and that you know, little experience was enough to kind of go, okay, there's definitely a connection here. So um, you know, Radical KM is something that I've worked on for since 2011 and I'm bringing it in um, to our organizations and the people that I'm working with. So how do we become more creative? This is a short list. There's lots of things that we can do, but um, playing arts and crafts, I, I like the arts stuff, like I say. Um, and it's not that I was particularly artistic as a, as a kid because I wasn't <laughs> at all, um, but I do enjoy it now. And as you can see behind me, I have a studio I paint um, as well. So I've had exhibitions here in Berlin and in Toronto before I moved. And um, yeah, that's something I enjoy doing and, and sharing. So, but exercising, you know, sometimes I'm not in the mood to paint. I go out for a walk, um, doing improvising when I'm doing a workshop, um, you know, the little games, just being conscious about what you're doing, being present in the moment, um, you know, which is one of the things about arts and crafts or photography. Um, some of the, those creative activities force you to be focused on the here and now and, and stop thinking about everything else that's going on outside of, of the here and now. And so that really helps your brain process things and crunch away on, on things that you're maybe trying to solve. Um, and if you're anything like me, often wake up in the morning and go, I have an idea. <laughs> so you know, we get so caught up in the, I have to have an answer now. Well, this is not how things work. So we need space. And so some of these things or all of these things help facilitate that, giving ourselves some space and, and making those connections. And I'm not gonna read all these points to you, but why to implement Radical KM. To me, the most important things are the last, the bottom two um, about facilitating sustainable leadership. We need to be present to making better decisions, more sustainable decisions um, for our organizations and for ourselves um, and, and being an integrated whole, um, being that whole person at work and not being afraid of saying, I'm an artist, I'm an accountant and an ar artist and an MBA and I get IT and you, know, you get all of me, you don't just get part of, of me. So um, this is good for everyone. So implementation, how are we doing on time? We're doing okay for time. Um, recalling that knowledge management is about learning, um, continuous learning, learning, um, organizational learning. And when we're talking about learning, the roots of how humans learn is by being playful, by, by being curious, iterating, trying and fail. If you look at kids, I, I I'm sure lots of you on here have had, have or ha, um, kids that were young um, and watched them, you know, learn and play and, and how they put things together and make connections. And so we need to tap into that ourselves as, as adults, going back to that curiosity um, that we had as, as children. So, and as with any other knowledge management activities, we need to be um, aware of the organization's culture and the maturity of the organization and, and make sure that we're adopting our strategy and our approach to what the organization is, is ready for. So a, a minute ago, I was saying that lots of organizations are risk adverse. So take a little thing, take a five minute little thing that makes it easy. Um, don't make it harder than it has to be. Um, sneak it in around the sides and and see what happens and let it let it grow um, and explore that, you know, support people in, in doing that um, in the organization, put together a little package of icebreakers maybe that they want to use in, in their meetings. Um, yeah, so that's my big message in all this. Don't make it harder than it has to be. There are two main paths, um, for lack of a better word, around implementation, the icebreaker approach. So this, that small individual team-based approach um, and a bigger studio 
based approach um, that takes more resources is certainly more noticeable. Um, I, I like the idea of our hybrid offices, you know, and people being able to work at home and let's renovate and recreate the office space so that it's filled with studio spaces or at least some of the space that was offices or um, cubicles that was desk space, turn it into studios, different kinds of studios, maybe a theater space, uh, an art studio, different because there are different artistic approaches to, to be used. Um, so create some different studios for, for doing this so that we make the time when we're together in our offices really valuable. Because in as much as a lot of this stuff can be done remotely, there's a lot of extra connection and extra creativity and connection that can happen when we're together in, a, in the same space. So why not take advantage of that? And I've talked to, talk to a number of organizations lately about, you know, about that, about making some of this old office space that they don't really need anymore into studios and, and what that might look like. With both approaches though, as with knowledge management in general, it requires patience, it requires iteration or trying and failing, seeing what works, seeing what sticks, what needs to be tweaked a little bit and lots and lots and lots of communication so that people understand why they're doing it, what this change is all about, why it's good for them, um, how they can take part, um, all of that kind of stuff. So with the icebreaker, just to say a bit more about the icebreaker approach, the KM team facilitates small acts of creativity within the organization setting. Maybe they do some training and get some people out in the, the organization um, supporting and doing their own icebreakers within the, the, their meetings, um, put together a little package and support people um, yeah, doing the icebreakers. Um, encourage people to be more creative on an individual and team basis. So give them the list of things, you know, that they can do at home on the weekends um, to tap into and help encourage creativity to, to develop. All this stuff isn't stuff that needs to be done in the office. Certainly it can be done um, at home um, on the weekend and the evenings, you know, different, different places. The main idea of doing the icebreakers in the meetings is to get people out of their comfort zones and thinking differently. Um, as I was saying at the start, people we're going from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting and it gets repetitive and it gets boring and it gets tedious. And so doing the little things to um, sort of wake people up and get them thinking differently um, is, is a good thing. So and that's the purpose of all these little icebreaker activities. With the studio, um, bigger, more noticeable, you're buying art supplies, you're buying, you know, staffing, creating a room, creating a, a physical space um, for this to happen. And um, yeah, so there's, there's more resources required um, around that. And some good practices that have been developed um, for, for doing this. So naming the space um, and locating it adjacent to the workspace, but not right in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, um, putting it in between so people have to get away at least a little bit from their desks if they're at the desks. Um, have some facilitators available, perhaps the KM team, perhaps some other people that are brought in um, specifically for this purpose, but put some facilitators in in place so that they can explain the expected behaviors and guide participants through the activities, answer any questions. When I do the, the painting, people get really anxious about the painting and that it needs to look like something, but it's not about the painting. It's not about the output, it's about the process. It's about um, you know, the connections that are made through the, the process of the painting or the creation, the, um, um, collaging or whatever it is that we're doing. And it's about the discussion and the reflection that, that happens around that. So it's absolutely about the process. You don't have to be an artist. This is not about recreating the Mona Lisa in any way, shape or form. Um, it's just a means to an end. And I see a couple of things in the chat. So I'm gonna, yes, I'm just taking a look at this. Um, 
Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for the comments. You're right. Absolutely. Um, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything in the, the um, chat. Anyway, back to this. So there's a great case study um, um, that, that I came across that was written up, um, I think it was published in 2012. Um, it was with the Danish government um, and it was the knowledge and innovation team, innovation and knowledge sharing department um, at the Danish government that have been tasked with improving collaboration um, between two of the biggest departments, the lawmaking and citizen services. And so there was a lot of silos, a lot of animosity. They didn't work well together. They argued and fought and it was just not nice. Um, I'm sure some of you will recognize that from your organizations, perhaps. Certainly I have recognized that from organizations I've worked with um, over my career. So yeah, so the IKS team was tasked with doing something about this problem because these, these two teams needed to work together on a regular basis. And so really need to um, improve how they work together. So what did they do? They established a studio. Um, and spent a year actually preparing the space. So buying art supplies, buying, you know, all the setting up desks and tables and shelves and working to de develop a process framework for, facil for facilitating the interactions, getting the KM team trained so that the, the KM team could, could facilitate for um, these two business units. Um, and the case study says the results were strikingly good. Um, and of course, what happens when something is strikingly good, word gets out and everybody else wants to get in on this. And so they ran the studio space for two years um, and users said that it, they solved problems that could not have been solved any other way. What amazing data to have, right? Great data, great experience, all positive, all good. And so what did they do? They shut it down. There was a reorganization, the IKS department was disbanded, they moved offices, so that shut down the studio and the whole facilitation framework, it all went away. Um, and so this is why people get asked me about data and metrics and ROI. And I am always very hesitant about to, to share my opinion because people will find a way, organizations will find a way to shut this down even when the data exists. And the data exists for knowledge management and exists for creative interventions, artistic based interventions. And it gets shut down because people don't understand it or it makes them uncomfortable. And so, you know, so much for data based decision making. Decision making is emotional. So tap into the emotions of people, get them, get, you know, connect with them on that level then you, know, you can get all the data you want um, to support the, that, but to connect with them on an emotional level. Anyway, unfortunately this was shut down um, and yeah, that's, that was the end of it, unfortunately. Now we're going to do a quick little activity before we get into the next part with the breakout rooms. So um, I'm going to ask you to get a piece of paper just a piece of scrap paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, get a pen or a pencil or a marker, something to write with, something to make a mark with. I am. I have some markers on the paper, my desk. So I'm gonna take one of my markers. I'm gonna take my pink marker because I like my pink marker. Excellent. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Oops. This is a scrap paper, so I got printing on the other side from something. We're gonna. You might use my scrap paper. Everybody's got their paper and their pencil. You're taking a page out of your notebook. If you don't have a scrap paper around, you know, absolutely. You can do just so long as you have a, something to make a mark with and something to make a mark on. And we're going to um, close our eyes. But before we start, oh, before yeah. we start, the, uh, before we start, there are two questions. Oh. If you can answer them. Oh, before sure. We start the, and then we can share, of course, the link to the Google Slides that everyone knows and it's on the chat. Please see 
Marco and Peter's questions. You want me to call uh, to uh, 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 tell you what the questions are? No, what I'm just opening. Oh, sorry. Go oh. ahead. What kind of problems were solved in the studio, and uh, are there any examples? That was Marco asks, and Peter asks, and what were the pilot results that were so good, even that you don't have the metrics themselves? If you can please share. Sure. The I can actually share the um, the case study that that was written up um, that it's like 14 or 16 pages long um, and and I can share that with with you. Um, they were were things that were really specific to the those two teams. They were about implementing changes in in government law and I honestly don't remember the the, the details of them now but but they had solved these um, yeah, they were about implementing, Laws that been, had been passed in in um, Denmark to you know, things like helping people to cross the road, um, at the redesign the the crosswalks, um, so that people could could cross the road, you know, like visually impaired or or people that had um, some kind of um, disability, um, other challenges, um, was one of the ones that's coming to mind. Um, one of the problems that they they solved, um, but yeah, I'm I'm afraid I don't remember all the the details. Of uh, out of the box box uh, problem solving. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It wasn't stuff that they were getting any answers to. You know, passing emails back and forth. Um, so it brought them together, and and they spent the the sessions were typically five days long, and so they spent time getting to know each other and communicating and, and working together. So there was a team building aspect to it. So it broke down a lot of the animosity and a lot of the competitiveness between the two teams because uh, that was part of the, the dynamic between the two teams. Each one thought that they were right and the other one was wrong, of course. And so bringing them together in a, in a shared space helped um, break down some of that, that yeah, that conflict. Um, yeah, so that- okay. I think that answers both questions. Okay. Um, so let's go to the uh, breakout rooms. We are listening uh, no, to the task. No, no, not, 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 no not, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. The task. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the activity first. Activity first. Um, so everybody's got their pen and their paper or the marker and the paper, and we're going to close our eyes and scribble just for a second. You know, not long, but just to scribble on the paper. I will hold my scribble up. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Hopefully you can see that a little bit, um, what I did. So, and we're gonna do um, five more scribbles or five more additions. You can keep your eyes open now for the, the future additions to your drawing, but this is your drawing. This is the start of your, your scribble drawing. So take it and rotate it around, see if there's a, a way that's, you know, more pleasing and appealing to you. Um, Can you show it again for, to everyone? Yeah. So we copy it. Oh, you don't have to copy it. You make your own. <laughs> make your own scribble. <laughs> Close your eyes and do a scribble. Be brave. Be brave. <laughs> it's not about copy in mine. So rotate it around and make an addition, so make an embellishment, add something to your scribble um, that you feel Perfect. improves it. Um, so I'm gonna add, I added, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not. I added a couple more lines here anyway, if, if you can Do see. Do you have a, a, a thicker marker? Because we hardly see what you're doing. Uh, I'll see if I have a thicker one, um, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't okay, really if, matter what I'm doing. Um, I, okay. So just because people are trying to see what you're doing. Okay. Let me, let me trace over these, but it's more about you making your own marks on your own paper rather than I'm just showing you mine so that you know that it's really not looking like anything. So there has the I found a black marker. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So that's what mine looks like right now. So that's with 
after two rounds. So add a third, we're at a third round, add something else to your drawing, your scribble. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna add here. I did some hatching on this end to do some shading. And so that's three. We'll do a fourth one, add something, add something. And again, you can keep rotating it and see if there's something that, you know, if it speaks to you from a different angle after you've done each embellishment, each addition. I'm up to uh, one, two, three, four, um, five, and last one. Okay. So that's what mine ended up looking like, kind of a bird's head. It doesn't have to look like anything. Uh, sometimes mine look like something, sometimes they don't. So if anybody would like to share their, hold theirs up to the camera and share theirs. I don't know, Maria, if you want to share yours. <laughs> they can be hard to see. Oh, yep. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else wants to share? Stuart, take your uh, higher. Ah, excellent. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, and also I see, uh, Alina, we can't see yours. It's not too wide, but uh, who's doing, who has a duck there? Gerizana. Yeah, great duck. Excellent. Thanks. I got to make, ah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay, you. now we can go to the breakout rooms. <laughs> You're all primed to come up with break. Uh, uh, oh, I need to give you the question. Um, it's so also the, on, the, on the slides of the breakout room, but please say, uh, please explain. Yeah, so just in the breakout rooms, now that you're all primed after having done the scribble drawing, um, is how would you deal with people who don't understand the value of creativity in Radical KM? What, what, how would you maybe convince them? What would, what would you do? So this is a change management kind of question, education, communication kind of question. What, how would you convey the value of creativity and, and radical KM to your, maybe even just to your KM team? Tell them you've been at this webinar, you came back with this cool idea, this crazy woman in Berlin <laughs> and uh, ask them what they think. How, do you, how would you present it to them? How would you convince them that it was something you should try in your KM team? Okay, so we have eight minutes. Yep. Let's start. Okay, I'll be moving through rooms to see that there are enough people in each room. And uh, you have the link so you can already tap yourself in and see what people are doing. Yep. Of um, course, I can send you to some rooms if you want specifically, but. No, I'll just look at the, the, um, the slides. So I make a couple of notes about what they're, they're doing. Oh, I see that Jan is alone. So I'll move now. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a few room. people that haven't gone into the rooms. Yeah, I see anything. so. Move him. I, I move people that I see are, that are alone to a different room. Okay, seems all good.
Now, do you see the link? I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and that. Yes, that will help. Yeah. Yes, I'm in there, so. Okay, so now you can play around and see what everyone is doing, like in a studio. Yeah. Moving, <laughs> moving along the people without even getting up from your chair. Room number one is empty, so we'll skip it. People, not enough people joined, so I moved them to another room. Uh, should I close the rooms now? Sure. Yeah, I've made some notes. So. 
Okay, 60 minutes notice and they're all back with us. Okay, I'll go back to sharing my screen. Uh, please uh, uh, make yourself silent again. Uh, mute yourself just a minute. Unmute everyone and please you unmute uh, uh, yourself. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Here yeah, they all muted. Thank you, Annette. Okay, here you are. Great. Great. Thank you. I was looking over your shoulder as you were doing that. I had access into the slides. So um, lots of groups were saying about just do it, some version on having the experience. And this is absolutely something that the best sales pitch is the experience of, of doing it because it's counterintuitive um, for, for lots of people. And so the best way to get over that in my experience certainly is in giving people the experience, which is why I do these little things in, in even like an hour long session is so that people get a little taste of of it so so that was good um there's a um, couple groups said about sharing the data and case studies that's definitely helpful um so because uh, that might get some people over the initial you know get them to try it um and using storytelling um the grassroots you know getting in at, at grassroots was was mentioned um and finding a, a group that might be more receptive like R&D, um, where they're big into knowledge creation anyway, so they might be, and they might be more receptive. So taking an approach much like other knowledge management activities and getting those success stories and, and sharing them out across the organization, because they, that does connect in with people on an emotional level. And they say, oh, they're doing it. I have that same problem. Um, maybe I can give that a, a try. You know, if somebody's al somebody else has already done it, I'll, I'll be the second to go. I won't be the first, but I'll be the second. Um, so, so yeah, and gamification um, was also something that, that came up in a couple of, of the rooms. So um, definitely um, some, some good ideas there. So thank you. I hope that you had a good discussion about it in your, your groups. So um, we got two minutes left. I will just say um, that there's a partial list a book list on the, the last slides and there's seven books there. I actually have a book list that's, I think it's 36 or 38 books now. Um, so if you want some serious reading that'll keep you busy for the next couple of years, um, feel free to reach out and I will send you the long list. Um, but this'll, this will get you started for sure. Um, so, and, and give you a good taste of, of you know, what's out there. Um, and, and the different forms that this can take. So, and lastly, this is my contact information. So if you um, wanna reach out and get in touch, um, you can radicalkm.com also works, will take you to my realization of potential page um, or find me on LinkedIn, send me a WhatsApp or a message I'm on my phone. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about this stuff so, and, and help you bring it to your organization, because I think it's time, um, time for that. And it's time because it's the top of the hour. <laughs> so I don't know, can we take a minute and do any questions? There's somebody in something in the chat. Okay, I think there are no more questions and people maybe are rushing to the next meeting. Everyone, thank, thank you so much for bringing this new approach, for developing this approach and bringing it to, uh, and sharing it with us. Uh, everybody, next week we are starting with our new section. We finished the session of engagement. We're starting with a new 
skills of the new way of the fourth wave workers. So I won't speak about what they are, but creativity decision, whatever. We are uh, uh, moving to the uh, forward to that place. So good morning, good afternoon, good night. Great KM to all you this week and anytime. Bye. 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 Thank well, you, bye. Stephanie. Thank you. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks, Steph. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I did. I did. So I'm just trying to read some of the, the comments in the chat. So, okay, actually, look, so you... please, you can look at, uh, at the left hand, you, at the right hand, you have three points. See three points near the um, uh, chat messages uh, on the right corner. Yeah. You uh, please press oh, on it. I can save it. Yeah, you can save your chat. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if you get any feedback from anybody about the session, so. Oh, I, I'm, at, I'm always sending a feedback a form, two or three may answer, and I'll, I'll share it with you so you can see the uh, results. Okay, perfect, thank you. Of course. Bye, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, bye. bye. Bye, Manuel.